See the difference? That's five sixteenths of an inch. Let's get busy. Welcome to Squared Away Garage. Today I'm checking valve train geometry. And I think some of you guys are going to be really shocked by a couple of these numbers on this engine. Okay, so I've already been through this process once and actually twice. I did it last night and I did it tonight just to kind of double check myself. And I got pretty, pretty similar results. Keep in mind that I don't have a lot of high tech tools here to measure this stuff exactly, but but uh, what, as we go through this, you will see that there's some obvious problems here. So um, this valve is going to have the original push rod in it that was in this engine when I got it. And this valve is going to, this valve here is going to have the uh, push rod checker in it that is already adjusted to a length that I believe is correct, okay? Now I wanna show you some details here that are gonna be hard to kind of see on video, I'm sure. Um, notice, and I've kinda of got it drawn here too, opposite of what this is. So these are all blacked out with just a black magic marker, okay? And then when I put the rocker on and I get everything set, as I turn the motor, I actually hold this roller so it can't rotate so now it has to slide on the top of the on the top of the valve and it makes these marks so that you can see where it's traveling okay pretty simple but what i want to show you here that i've i've got drawn out because it's hard to see otherwise is what the difference is between the the two push rod links what i saw so this is the uh, valve with the uh, original push rod in it that was in this engine okay so what this represents the circle obviously is the top of the valve and the pencil marks here is showing you a an illustration of where I see the travel in the top of that on the top of that uh, valve and approximately how wide it is compared to the corrected geometry with the longer push rod. Okay, so the numbers, and I'm measuring these, so, so these numbers are, this number here is not exact because I kind of have to eyeball and measure with a caliper. But what I measure is that travel area illustrated in the pencil marks is about 0.135 inches of travel back and forth. And it really favors the back side of the of the valve okay that's with a 10.1 or 10.875 inch push rod that's the length of the push rod that was in this engine once i get the corrected geometry i have a pad when i measure it and it's a little bit easier to see on that because it's more concentrated i measured a 0 0.0670 area of travel and it is much more centered in the valve and that push rod length to get that is the 11.1875 inches so the difference between those two is 5 sixteenths of an inch so that's why this is a very uh, easy to see um, illustration of why it's important to uh, get your valve train geometry correct Okay, this is gonna be a very rudimentary uh, display here, but it's just something else that I can kind of show you. So right now, this is the valve with the corrected geometry with the right length push rod, okay? So I've, I've zeroed, and, and I, 
I can't set this across anything that's flat. This all has a little bit of a radius, and when I move this, the stud is going to get in the way on the other on the other rocker. So I'm using this uh, position right here. I'm just kind of lining up with the with the back of the stud and letting it sit where it naturally wants to be on the back of the rocker. And I've zeroed my my angle gauge there. So it's zero right there, okay? Let me move this and it'll come back alive. Okay, so we're at zero right there. And I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna move it to the other rocker that has the original. That's the original push rod. There's a five degree, 5.1, five degree roughly, uh, difference in the angle of those rockers and I don't know if you can see this with that I'm going to try to illustrate this with some still pictures or something I don't know if this comes through but you see how that's leaned back right there and then when I put this rocker on see how flat it is you can see that the back of the rocker and the and the and the front of the rocker are more flat. Okay, both rockers are currently off the lobe. I'm gonna turn the engine over and we're gonna first, we're gonna, we're gonna see this valve go down and then I'm gonna make a measurement. Then we're gonna turn the engine over a little further. This valve's gonna go down, this one's gonna come up. We're gonna make a measurement off of this and we're gonna compare what the difference in the geometry uh, turns into on lift. And by the way, this engine has equal lift on both the intake and exhaust. It's a 0 0.541 lift. So these are, these should be moving equally. Okay. So I can't measure, I can't get to the top of the valve to use that surface. There's a lot of curves and things going on here, but I do have a flat edge on the hat for the top of the valve. And I do have a machined surface that the valve sits on. So I'm gonna use my calipers and I'm gonna measure between those two points. And we come up with 1.5600. All right, now I've moved the, I've, I've barred the engine over and now the exhaust valve is open. Same measurement, same place. 15965, let's measure that one more time. I think I had a better measurement than that. 15965, okay, so repeatable. Okay, I want to go over the, the data here again real quick and just tie everything together. Now that you've seen what I've done, hopefully you understand it, and you've seen what I've done, I'm just going to tie all the numbers together here real quick, okay? So first thing I want to, I want to remind everybody of, my cam has equal lift on the intake and the exhaust. My lift for both lobes, for both of these valves that we were working with, should be 0.541 on this cam, okay? So the only difference between the two is the push rod length, which is changing the geometry of the rocker arm, okay? So with the corrected geometry, we measured the spring height 
when the cam was pushing the valve open to its furthest point, we measured a spring height of point or 1.56 inches, okay? That's up here. Um, with the incorrect geometry from the short push rod, we measured 1.5965. So there's a difference of 0 0.0365 inches that the valve on the incorrect geometry is not opening. So the correct geometry opens it further by 0 0.0365 inches, okay? Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when I take my pocket computer and I get on old Google and I say, what percentage of 0.541, which is my lift on my cam, is 0 0.0365 inches, which is the difference that we're seeing here, that comes up to 6.747%. 6.747% of lift loss from improper geometry that was going on on this engine. Okay, so yes, this push rod that's in here was the one that was in this engine when I took it apart. And I'm checking it when I'm putting it back together and I see a problem and I correct it. And that's the difference. That's the gain in, in valve opening that I get 6.747%. That's big. Okay, so the other thing that I want to I want to remind everybody is remember when I was talking about this a minute ago. So, with the improper geometry, I had a much bigger uh, measured travel for the uh, roller on the top of the valve. Okay, it favored the backside, and you could see that it was sliding across the top of the valve quite a ways before it would push it down. Right. The corrected geometry, that was a very tight uh, movement. It wasn't very wide. It was, uh, I measured 0 0.067 of width that, that that roller moved across the top of the valve. So it was basically, it was just pushing straight up and down with just very little front to back movement in that arc, right? Where the improper geometry is sliding across there as that rocker is moving, it's sliding across and it was point one three five inches it traveled right so what does this mean that means that we're affecting our duration and i can't tell you exactly how much duration we're losing like i can with the lift because i don't have a degree wheel and i can't measure everything but if somebody wanted to take the time to do that i'm sure there's a loss in duration also that could be measured so Although this is pretty rudimentary, kind of rough around the edges, um, it and it's a very extreme error with the 5 16 of an inch difference in the push rod lengths, which by the way, this engine needs. Um, you know, it really is a, it's a, it really shows it off quite a bit. If you were talking about changing your push rod length by a 32nd of an inch, I don't think that you would see these numbers like this, but this engine was running with that, those push rods in it. So yeah, it works, but it wasn't working up to its full potential. So now I get this corrected when I'm putting the engine back together, we make some performance gains. I don't know how much, but it's got to be worth something. Maybe. 6.747%? I don't know. I got one other little tidbit of information here. So these are uh, roller lifters in this engine. These are the same lifters that came out of the engine uh, from before. Should have noticed right here. I've got, uh, I don't know if you can see them. I think you can. See the two bl black marks? So one of them corresponds with the top of the wear mark in here. That wear mark was created by being in this bore. 
This is the same set of lifters that was in this bore previously. When I took everything apart, they were all numbered and marked. So this is number two cylinder set of lifters. They only go in one way. That wear mark was created by that bore right there. Okay, so the top line is the top of the, the wear mark. The bottom line right there is where the lifter sits on this cam. So what I'm saying is with this cam, these lifters don't go down in the bore as far as they did with the old cam. So if you think about that for a second, that means that that push rod is now that much shorter and that makes the air at the rocker arm makes the rocker arm geometry that much worse so that five degree angle or that five degrees of of tilt that i showed you uh, early on in the video now that becomes a bigger number and that geometry is off that much further probably exaggerates the other math to make that six percent uh error um a bigger number so what do we learn from this in a game of numbers all these little things add up and I know that this the 6.7 percent of of loss and lift doesn't doesn't translate directly into 6.7 percent gain in power I know that but all these little numbers and all these little errors they add up and over time you know it makes a difference so I'm glad I checked this I'm really glad I checked this I'm a little irritated with the situation to find that um, that this problem exists but I'm glad I found it